Um, let's talk about this uh, concept of the spectral radius, uh, something you would have, you might have studied in linear algebra. The spectral radius of any matrix A M M is basically denoted by this uh, the Greek letter rho of M, and it is the maximum absolute eigenvalue of that matrix M. So in other words, if, if lambda i were all the eigenvalues of M, then irrespective of sign, we would take the largest magnitude eigenvalue and that would become uh, be known as the spectral radius. As a quick example, if we look at an M, for instance, 1, 4, 3, 2, okay, this has a characteristic equation which is lambda minus 5 and lambda plus 2 equals 0 which means lambda equals 5 and lambda equals minus 2. These are the two um, uh, eigenvalues of this uh, matrix. So then rho of m would of course be 5, and that's the spectral radius. So that's, in a, that's how we calculate the spectral radius. Now one important thing to keep in mind is there is a property of the spectral radius which states that the um, related to the norm uh, of any matrix, so any natural matrix norm on M, rho M, of course, is less than or equal to the norm of N. Just something for you to keep in mind. So now we get to this important property, uh, which is to do with the initial guess. So basically what this is saying is in the previous video you've seen, uh, we looked at the general form of iterative methods and that's as shown here xk plus 1 equals g of xk plus hb. Now convergence is guaranteed for any initial guess, x0, any initial guess, to the true solution or exact solution x hat of ax equals b, if and only if the spectral radius of g, this matrix here, g, is less than 1. Okay, so um, basically this is a very important property and one we can use uh, quite um, uh, reasonably for uh, for matrices to figure out whether any initial guess would work or not because that remains a question that um, will uh, we be able to get convergence for any initial guess uh, or not. Now in you've already seen that uh, I've just to recap for you here that G is usually I minus H A as we have structured it and it's this H that um, is different for the different methods. So H is equal to um, D inverse uh, for the Jacobi, okay, and H is equal to L inverse for the Gauss-Seidel uh, method. So um, that's just a quick reminder, a recap for you on the previous video, you would have seen that result. So this it basically means that what we have to do is for the Gauss-Seidel, it would mean that um, the the spectral radius of uh, I minus D inverse A, in fact, which is the G matrix, um, should be less than 1, and the spectral radius of I minus L inverse A should be less than 1. Okay, so here's an example of a system, and we want to find out what is the spectral radius of this, and will uh, for instance, Jacobi uh, work for this particular method. So here, A is uh, basically, as you can see, I've just written down what A in fact is. And then what we do is the D, the equivalent of this would be, diagonal matrix for this would be just the diagonal entries, uh, remember? So this would be the diagonal matrix D for this matrix A. And of course, uh, we know from linear algebra, or at least you should know, the inverse of a diagonal matrix is simply the reciprocal of the values on the diagonal. So that simply means just 2 becomes 1 over 2, 5 becomes 1 over 5, and so on. So there's your D inverse. Now, the next thing that we want to calculate, of course, for the uh, Jacobi, uh, in fact, is... Uh, uh, we have our H, so now we're ready to calculate G is, of course, I uh, minus D inverse A for the Jacobi. Okay, this is for, for the Jacobi. So G is I minus D inverse A, so that's equal to 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. That's the identity. Minus, uh, when we multiply D inverse and A, we get, so we get this, and as we subtract, that matrix actually becomes, that's our G. 
Now we'll calculate the eigenvalues of this. That comes down to this determinant, which actually just boils down to just uh, lambda times lambda squared minus a quarter. And that should be equal to zero by uh, the characteristic equation is determinant lambda i minus g equals zero, which means that lambda equals zero or lambda equals plus or minus a half. Now that tells us very, very clearly that the spectral radius of g is in fact a half. That's the largest eigenvalue, absolute value of the eigenvalue for the matrix g. Sorry, this is g. Okay, so therefore, uh, this uh, which is less than one, therefore um, convergence guaranteed for any initial guess. So remember that for Gauss-Seidel, if we do do the same thing, g is uh, i minus l inverse a. So the l here, remember, is um, the the lower triangle part of a essentially. So if you look at a, this triangle here will be the values, and above will just be zeros. So it's going to be two. 0, 0, 2, 2, 0, 0, 0 here, and this will be 2. So what happens next is, the next thing we want to do is we want to calculate, of course, L inverse. And uh, OK, so um, I'll leave it to you to work this out. The inverse is very easy to calculate, mostly zeros you see here. So but anyway, it does require a little bit of work. But the inverse turns out to be uh, this, a very neat and clean, um, reasonable, but reasonable to calculate, but you still have to calculate it. And of course, a G then turns out to be, of course, um, so G is going to be uh, the identity matrix minus L inverse A. When you multiply the two, you'll end up with this, in fact, which you can check easily as all the ingredients are there for you. And of course, that's equal to, um, that's equal to here. I'll write it here for you, please. Zero, 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 all zeros except you have a minus a half, minus a half, and plus half here. Now, when we take determinant lambda i minus g is going to be the determinant of, in fact, Lambda zero 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 lambda zero half half lambda minus half. And that is basically lambda into lambda into lambda minus a half equals zero, which means lambda equals zero, zero and a half are the three eigenvalues. And of course the spectral radius of uh, G in fact is a half, which is also less than one, so we are guaranteed convergence for any initial guess. There are two types of special cases, a matrix, a matrix A for which a convergence can be guaranteed without having to examine the iteration matrix. In other words, iteration matrix meaning G, so without having to look at its eigenvalues. And that is that if A is a positive uh, definite matrix, okay, then we are guaranteed convergence for any initial guess for both Gauss, uh, actually for uh, any iterative me me method structured as we've seen before, as we've seen earlier. So A is positive definite, okay? Now of course, um, which, oh, of course this means A is symmetric positive definite, which means just to remind you, XT AX, okay, is greater than both the Jacobi and gauss seidel methods converge for an initial guess. There are certain situations uh, such as a solution of partial differential equations where the matrices that we have uh, would be end up with are known to be of this type. But in general, this is quite difficult. And determining something is positive definite is not easy uh, to do, in fact. Um, uh, the other case, which is easier, relatively easier, is um, convergence is also guaranteed if A is uh, strictly um, diagonally dominant. Uh, so that basically is much easier to observe. Uh, and remember, that means that the absolute, sorry, the absolute value, the absolute value of the uh, uh, diagonal entries, okay, for all j's, for j not equal to i, of course, uh, and 
absolute value of the AIJ, the sum of them, okay, for all the rows. Okay, so that's just quickly there, strict, diamond, strict diagonal dominance, the definition of it. Now, if that is the case, then of course, we can also, we are also guaranteed convergence for any uh, initial guess. And that's all we want to discuss regarding the uh, criteria for initial guesses that will lead to convergence for an iterative method. We'll stop here. Thank you.